Hello, so this video is gonna be a little bit different. I want to bring a really important point to you guys that I think we need to have a conversation about. So I'm no copyright lawyer or anything like that, but I've been drawing, you know, all my life and, you know, that's where I'm going to focus this conversation. And um, by copyright, I mean in the most like general sense of like production, distribution, and ownership of intellectual property. And right now, right, there's two ways of um, thinking about it. There's like culturally and legally thinking about it. Legally, it's a bit more concrete. We already have laws that define what counts as inspiration or plagiarism, uh, or, you know, it counts as like entirely new transformative work if we're not totally sure if this is inspired or this is plagiarized um there are like people who decide they're the ones who are going to draw the line between those um but you know it, they we don't necessarily agree with it all the time if say a judge thinks that this is transformative work while we culturally speaking we think that it's not transformative work we think it's plagiarism um we don't necessarily agree with the legal system and that's just how it goes so there's this clear disconnect between how things are being treated in this large commercial scale in legal procedures compared to how we treat things in a more intimate and you know, smaller communities plagiarizing art um, tracing photo bashing is more on the side of less creative and more immoral um, because we culturally think that the more it comes out of one's imagination with no help or references the more we see the output as valuable or important not always of course as things aren't you know that black and white but things tend to go in that direction think of like the examples that i just mentioned photo bashing um, other people's existing artworks and calling it your own you know, generally seen as bad tracing other people's artworks and then calling it your own generally seen as bad still copying other people's art and calling it your own it's bad but it's not as um, immoral as the other examples and then copying other people's art transforming it adding your own personal flair and then calling it your own um sure that's okay no, we're, we're fine with that but copying no one making all your artworks from imagination that's great that's the ideal um, in this like culture and thinking that we have of course this could be a straw man uh, i'm not saying that artists think like this i'm not saying i agree with this either but i think we can all agree that there's this idea that vaguely exists in the art community inside the collective culture in art making that the more it comes out of you personally and the more it doesn't represent other people's work the more that we see it as valuable or morally correct so when one sees like this table or like this spectrum one could infer that the harder you work the more effort you put in the more you put your own creativity to the resulting artwork the more you should be rewarded and the more shortcuts you take the less it represents you as an artist your views the less you should be rewarded which is what we naturally believe right as humans not just art hard-working people deserve the fruits of their labor and now i bring an argument that's been talked about a lot in the pro ai community which is how come our art community encourage and even support artists that create fan art or merchandise that represent characters um, that these merch sellers don't even own it's quite normal of course to see it in conventions you know lots of keychains bags t-shirts um, all with fan art with no formal licensing from the you know original ip holders for them to sell those creations and these merch sellers are also piggybacking on the works of previous artists that they didn't care to credit or compensate this actually made me think uh for a bit on how i view copyright on my own and it's i think a very good point that they brought up and i feel like this exclusion uh that we have for our fan art but not for ai is very tricky to untangle there's lots of overlap and there's lots of interconnected things made us think that way because i think that way right one idea is we're less forgiving to large corporations to these large ip holders you know we don't necessarily care about disney right or um, netflix as a whole or like nickelodeon as a whole don't necessarily care about them but we're more forgiving to individual artists so when we see these merch sellers you know on like face to face when we interact with them we're more forgiving and we see them more as human um less so as like this vague entity this vague corporate entity another 
is these fan art creations are quote-unquote transformative enough that we collectively think that they're allowed to sell these things you know culturally of course um not legally fan art and other fan made creations have always been in a gray area in many different fields not just in art so mods um fan made games uh, fan-made remixes of original pop songs um, those all go into a legal um, gray area but you know as like a community and culturally speaking we're kind of okay with that I think we can all agree that we're kind of okay with that right I think the idea that stands out as a rebuttal to this argument is the transformation one Right. Or the resulting artwork being transformative enough that it doesn't necessarily represent the source material anymore. Honestly, I'm not even sure if I agree with that, but I think it's the strongest point that we have. So let's just entertain it for a bit. Right, so bear with me. Uh, with the rise of AI, I think that path to making transformative work is going to be much shorter and much easier to do. So there's this thing called dream booth or fine tuning in AI where you can add more images to its data set um, so it can copy a style more efficiently, more effectively. Say you have a favorite game, right? So you really love this game to your to, to death and you really like their art style. You can just grab a dozen or so screenshots, feed it into the AI, and it will now create entirely new images from the dataset that kind of represent the source material. And these new images are really, really impressive. Now, if you haven't seen the styles that this AI can pull off, it's really, really impressive. It, al it almost looks like the real thing. It's the same concept actually with the Lensa app. If you're not familiar, the, the big app that everyone's talking about where you just upload a few photos of yourself, then it will create astounding portraits of you a few minutes later. And it's, it's basically the same thing that the AI is being trained on your face. Then it creates images and portraits of your face later on. And the same thing with this one where you take um, new images from a style that it doesn't know, feed it, then it will copy that style effectively um, after the training is finished. And when something is as easy as pressing a button to you know, generate thousands of thousands of images in seconds uh, in millions of computers all over the world, I think we're going to be desensitized to this culture that we have of ownership uh, of styles and intellectual property. As an analogy, let's take a look at another example. I don't particularly remember the book or reference, so forgive me for that. I haven't been able to search it, but I'll link down in the description of the article that um, I'm vaguely talking about. So I've read somewhere um, back then that there's some tribes that exist where they don't have this sense of individual ownership to children and spouses. So how it goes is, say we have a village of just three people, Paul, John, and they have a romantic relationship with Sally. So in a way, Sally has two husbands and these three all want children. So they engage in baby making procedures. And when Sally gets pregnant and gives birth to a child, let's call the baby Ian, um, Paul and John don't really care if they're the real father of Ian. Um, they will still take care of the baby regardless of the ownership of the baby. So they still take responsibility for it, even though they're not the blood related father. But now think of this situation scaled up into like an interconnected web where it's almost impossible to know who the true father of one child is. And this is what they call partible paternity. So if say a child is running around misbehaving in modern societies, we'd call upon the parents of that child and might even imply that the parents of that child are irresponsible for letting the child act like that. They're not taking responsibility of their child just misbehaving and causing a ruckus, right? In this tribe of partible paternity, what would happen is the child would actually be parented right then and there by the adults that are present. So they would maybe scold the child or try to stop their misbehaving as if they were the parent of that child. And when asked afterwards why they did that, even though it's not their child, the response is, well, it's the child of the tribe and the children of the tribe is everyone's responsibility. So it's a very interesting perspective on how they view ownership of, say, children, families, partners, compared to how the modern society views families and spouses, right? Now think of this situation, but applied to how 
how we view ownership of style, um, artworks and intellectual property. It's actually quite easy to imagine if you've worked in a large scale production, um, in a large production pipeline. Say you're one of the many artists that um, worked in this game. And if you, even if you didn't make a particular artwork, you still feel a connection to that artwork <clears throat> because of the unifying nature of working together with your other co-artists. Another example is you did a group project that the whole class is involved in. All of you, all of you made multiple paintings and everyone gets to show their work at the big exhibit um, later on down the line. So there's a sense of pride in we made those paintings in that exhibit. Even if say you just made one painting and the rest are paintings from your classmates, there's still that sense of camaraderie that this is our painting and those styles in those artworks represent our styles. It's more of pushing towards this collective ownership of styles and ideas rather than giving importance to individualism. So is that so impossible to apply that thinking on how we view IPs recognized all over the world? Games, movies, music, all these things from pop culture, could they be imagined as ours in the upcoming future? Could I have this sense of this song is our song or this game is our game rather than this game was made by people from this company so it's their game but i'm just playing the game as a consumer so i don't necessarily have that kind of ownership to this game that i'm playing could that be changed in the near future when ai basically makes these transformative work and makes it very very easy for us to share ideas share knowledge or not necessarily share but borrow some would even call steal um other people's works and ideas and styles so honestly i don't know because i'm really hopeful that maybe we could have this big gigantic shift on how we see ideas because i f i feel like generally um it's kind of like a good thing the way that say if researchers made um a gigantic breakthrough they would share it all over the world because they know that it's gonna have like a bigger impact if they share their findings to the entire world to other communities rather than keeping it to themselves i feel like that's a much more productive way of thinking about it and going about your life rather than closing in and kind of gatekeeping your ideas that these are these are my ideas and uh, i'm not gonna share it with anyone else because i don't want to lose that sense of ownership to these ideas, to these artworks, and to these um, intellectual properties. So I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Maybe, you know, I could be totally wrong. Maybe we could head in a totally different direction. I don't know. Let me know. That's about it, guys. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like. And if you want to see more videos such as this one, make sure to subscribe. If you want to see a video of an AI trained on a public domain data set, um, you can go check out this video uh, right here where I talk about that. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.